Hey guys, I just wanted to jump on really quick and talk about something unscripted from things I've been seeing on the internet that I feel like I should clear the air about. Now I hate that the majority of my videos end up having to be something medical, so I'm going to try and talk about this uh, as straightforward as possible. However, there will st probably still be cuts because I don't know how to speak in complete sentence. So with cons coming up, and the vaccine, and the pandemic, it uh, looks like there's been a lot of heated debates over vaccine mandates and exemptions. So it got me kind of curious what exactly can exempt you from a mandate. So I started doing a little bit of research into uh, not only medical exemptions, but also religious exemptions. Now it's currently September, which means that the flu shot season has started. So there's going to be some muddy waters on who can get what and who can get what when and where. Personally, I gave our company's 1st through 10th uh, vaccines for this season, and so far nobody has requested any exemptions, but I know they'll come. And it seems crazy to think that it was almost a year ago that I made this flu vaccine video, which either means time is flying really fast or I'm not putting out enough videos. But for full explanation on the flu shot and the exemptions, you can go and watch that video, because I don't want to go over all of that stuff again. But basically, there are medical exemptions to getting a vaccine. Not everybody can get it. Some people are immunocompromised, other people just can't get it for allergic reasons. But then it comes down to the question of the religious exemption, which is a little confusing to litigate. Looking at the protections under the Civil Rights Act and Title VII, the Religious Protections section, it actually goes over in detail what is considered a religion, what is considered personal beliefs, and what a company or an employer can or cannot ask of their employees. So looking into it a little bit deeper, Title VII of the Civil Rights Act does protect your religious beliefs. That no employer can fire you or treat you any differently because of your religious beliefs. And if you need accommodations in the workplace, they should be made available to you. But when it comes down to things like the vaccine or healthcare, if the company mandates something like the COVID vaccine or the flu vaccine, there is a long legal process to actually exempt yourself because of religious beliefs. Your employer is well within their rights to ask you and have you sign a legal document stating what your religious belief is. And then the next question they could ask is, well, if you have had this religious belief, have you ever had any other vaccines or healthcare while you've had these beliefs? And if you sign yes and lying, that alone could get you fired. But if you say no, well then you have to explain why specifically the COVID-19 vaccine affects your religion, including proof from scriptures, letters from religious leaders, and that gets a little hard to prove. And that's why not many religious exemptions ever actually get approved. It comes down to a case-by-case -case basis uh, on what the employer wants. Now with all that being said, and I'll link some of the resources down below, those protections only really apply to employees and employers. With private entities and businesses, those things don't protect you. For example, I'll use what people have been arguing about online, BLFC's religious exemption for the vaccine. When they stated that they would put a form to allow people to submit for a religious exemption, there was such a stink online about it that I had to look into it a little bit deeper. And I got a hold of the form, and it's perfectly legal and asks all the same questions. And it even states that it's up to the convention to approve or deny that claim. So under pressure, BLFC cracked and they removed the religious exemption, even though there had been no requests up to that date. But realistically and legally, even if there were a thousand requests, they could just burn all the requests and say, sorry, you're going to have to either get the shot or not come. And they're well within their rights to do so, because you're not their employee and they're not your employer. They're a private business who's allowed to request whatever they want of you. Businesses and conventions mandating the vaccine is more performative to show that they support this, that they want this as their goal. And if it's something that you don't believe in, or you feel like for some weird reason you don't want the vaccine, then you just can't go. It's not taking away any of your freedoms. It's not blocking you from any constitutional right. You just can't go. 
Now, I even saw some things online saying that there should be no exemptions, but like I said before, some people have medical reasons that they should not and cannot get a vaccine. That being said, even if the convention completely mandated it, no exceptions whatsoever, that's not going to stop everybody else who's coming in. Even if every furry who went to BLFC was vaccinated and had proof and it was legal, that's not going to stop the other human beings coming into that hotel from not wearing a mask, not distancing, being unvaccinated, what have you. So it's still our responsibility to protect ourselves and protect the people around us and be safe. I do recommend doing some research into this if it is an exemption that you feel like you need. If you feel like for some reason, philosophically, you do not agree with getting a vaccine. In cases like with the flu shot back in the day when we used to use animal fats and egg products, a lot of vegans were exempt from it because it was against their entire lifestyle. Hey guys, editing Atris here. I just wanted to pop in, I read something as I was editing about the Jehovah's Witnesses actually used to declare an exemption from the vaccine due to religious beliefs, but in the late 50s, the leadership of that religion um, actually said, no, it's fine, get your vaccines. And uh, as of late, uh, they tried to do the same thing with the COVID vaccine, but the religious leaders came back and doubled down and said, no, the COVID vaccine is fine in our religion. So while there are exemptions, and you feel like you might get that through your religion, I would double check with your leadership before putting in any paperwork. So it's not entirely to say if they can't get the vaccine or don't want to that they should be shunned from society, but for those of us who can't get it or won't get it, the rest of us need to, to be able to protect the people who can't. So if it's this late in the game and you still don't have your vaccine and I don't understand why because it's almost been a year, get the dang thing. It's a very simple solution to this problem. If people are having issues with exemptions or other legal forms or bringing in paperwork, the easiest solution is to just get the vaccine and then you can go to whatever convention you want. Now with that being said and out of the way, I want to take this brief little moment to explain something uh, that I've had big, heated, angry arguments about with people online. Alternative treatments to COVID. COVID is a virus. V-I-R-U-S. It's not a bacteria, it's not a parasite, and it shouldn't be treated as such. With all of the different alternative treatments that people are taking to help with COVID, a lot of people are doing a lot of serious damage to their bodies and trying so hard to make something work that's never intended to work that way. There's a lot of people taking antibiotics and creating antibiotic resistant viruses. There's a lot of peepee, peepee, there's a lot of people taking antiparasitic medication, which does work and is proven to help with parasites and has shown proof in other countries to help with parasites. But again, COVID-19 is not a parasite. And all you'll be doing is damaging your intestinal lining and damaging your liver. To be transparent, there have been some studies that show that some of these medications help block COVID from getting into your body, but they don't work any better than the proven alternatives like vaccines and things, antivirals and prophylactic medications like doxycycline. So why are we trying to make these things work so hard when we have things that work already? The example I give is you're trying to open a blister pack with a crowbar when you have scissors right next to you. Yes, it'll probably work if you hit it enough, but you'll destroy the product in the meantime. Just use the thing that works. You all are driving me crazy. But outside of that, don't believe everything you hear right away. Do a little bit of research. If you have questions, ask a doctor. And I know people have big distrust of doctors nowadays. They're not trusting doctors for one thing and then trusting TV hosts for another. So I just don't get it. If you do have any questions about the things I said today, you could definitely once again check the links I put below or just ask me in the comments and I'll give you my best answer. I've talked about this subject at length with a lot of internal medicine doctors and other nurses and nurse practitioners. We've had long discussions and looked at the surveys and all of the data and I just don't. <sighs> anyway, thanks for listening to my short little rant. Like, subscribe, share it to people if they have the same concerns, and I'll see you at the next con if you're vaccinated.